Father, this moment you are coming to the presence with the attitude of gratitude, Lord, for giving us another opportunity uh, that we could uh, study your word, O oh God, especially as we have decided to study on uh, uh, the things that are going to happen and the last things, O oh God. Lord, I pray the study may build uh, hope in us and it may comfort us and build confidence in us, O oh Lord. This may not be a study where we get frightened, but... Uh, we could uh, have, we could joyfully accept and uh, experience the hope that is in Jesus Christ. Lead us and guide us, Lord. Help us that we may not get into any speculations, but uh, we may stand on your word and uh, with your spirit, we may experience the joy of redemption uh, and the picture we may we may be able to understand at least to an extent the picture of our great redemption in you, O oh God. And teach us, speak to us through your servant, and our discussions also may be meaningful, and that edify the members of God. And the time we are going to spend in fellowship with one another, uh, to thy throne of grace, asking for your mercy, so that you may reveal yourself, your sons, to us, and especially in us. Thank you very much for listening to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, uh, Praveen, for uh, leading us in that opening prayer. And once again, welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, today, we are dealing with the subject uh, which uh, technically is called eschatology. Uh, and it basically means the study of last things. And as we uh, proceed, you will probably get a better picture of it as we move on. Um, we are actually reached section 16 of uh, the booklet that we have been using for the study. Uh, we believe uh, the entire series now we have gone through. Uh, we know that there are many things that we discussed in it that uh, needs perhaps revisiting which we will do as we come along. But at least we are happy that we have come to that point where uh, we have reached that last, uh, uh, you know, section, section 16. But today for the study, I am not going to refer to the book, but give you an overview of what uh, eschatology uh, deals with. What does it include? Uh, what are the various uh, subjects that come under it? And so uh, leave you with an overview and then uh, we can pick up uh, some of those specifics uh, as we you know, continue to move along. So I want to do a PowerPoint presentation today. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, give me just a moment as I bring this up on the screen. Now, let me see if someone can, uh, Confirm that they can see the see the screen. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm just trying to widen my screen here. Oh. Uh, one more. I just lost my PowerPoint. Okay. I presume you can see that. Okay. So. As I mentioned, uh, this is the study of last things. And uh, let's look at how we can define it. Eschatology is the branch of theology, as you can see on your screen, that is concerned with the end of time, the study of last things. So uh, we, we sort of, uh, categorize this as a special study because uh, the last things or the end times, you can use various uh, you know, words to describe it, was definitely uh, you know, mentioned in the scriptures. Uh, the Bible talks about the end times. Christ talks about it. Uh, he has a very long discourse with his uh, disciples with regards to uh, what would transpire as time goes on. And of course, the Apostle Paul, who 
uh, is a major contributor to the New Testament. Uh, he addresses uh, aspects of this and especially when he writes to the Thessalonians, the letters to the Thessalonians, there is a sharp focus of what is to happen in terms of, uh, you know, as we move on with time. Now, many of us have read the book of Revelations and those of us who have been in the church for a very long time, uh, Revelation was something that we discussed very uh, often. Uh, and it and the book of Revelation definitely brings in elements and, and, and talks a great deal about what is to happen as it even as uh, the first chapter mentions uh, as the apostle John writes he says to show what must soon take place this I'm reading from the first chapter uh, verse one to show what must uh, soon take place so obviously there is a tremendous interest in what is to happen. Uh, in the same chapter, verse three, he talks about the time is near. And so even John recognized that the time was near for something dramatic to take place or something uh, new to happen. And so, uh, so eschatology is definitely something that the scriptures attest to Jesus Christ attests to, and there is a need for us to talk about it. Now, in particular, as you will notice on the screen, though not exclusively, uh, eschatology are matters related to the return of Jesus Christ. You know, so that is the specific focus that eschatology might have, and related to that, they then will come various. Uh, subjects or items or topics that will be covered. So what can we categorize under the broad heading of eschatology? All right, so let's just look at that. Uh, if you notice on your screen, uh, I've categorized it into blue and red. The blue you can say are is personal eschatology. What happens at death? And is there an afterlife? Uh, what happens between uh, death and the resurrection? So the, the study of these things are more personal in nature and hence they are categorized under personal eschatology. Resurrection of the dead. Now that's a very huge subject and we discuss that uh, under this broad heading of eschatology. Coming under the uh, red category down there, we say those are general eschatology. And they include subjects like the Great Tribulation, because the Bible talks about, you know, the uh, Antichrist and uh, uh, the, uh, the beast that is to appear. And so all of these come under this Great Tribulation. Obviously, the second coming, as I mentioned, that is the uh, that will be the primary focus of uh, this particular subject. The millennium. Uh, what uh, we talk about a thousand year reign. Uh, what does that uh, mean? Uh, what kind of a character will that have? So the millennium is also under the subject. The new heavens and the new earth. Revelation talks about that. Uh, it, you, can, you can say the new creation. We have in Genesis a creation. And then in Revelation, you have a new creation. So all of these are, uh, you know, lumped into the subject of eschatology. And like I said, there could be personal eschatology and general eschatology. One of the, one of the subjects that I have not written down there is uh, some people would like to include what happens to Satan? What happens to demons? Uh, because the reality of Satan and demons are very much, you know, uh, part of biblical discourse. Uh, what will what is their final fate? And under that, you can talk about the judgment. You know, we talk about the judgment, uh, and uh, that sounds scary, and that sounds sounds a little, you know, intimidating. But what is the judgment? Uh, so all of this can also be uh, brought into uh, the purview of this subject. All right. Let me move then to. Uh, what I would call 
uh, challenges. As we study this subject, it poses some challenges to us. And I'd like to share three of those challenges. Uh, I hope you can see uh, the, your, your screen. I know the, the lettering is a little too small. I hope though you can see it. Under the, under the first challenge, uh, when we study the subject, is this lack of details or specificity, uh, you know, that fact that the fact that we don't have too many in too much of information on this or detailed information on this. And what happens at that time is then it tempts us to speculate, right? So uh, uh, one of the challenges to study the subject is the fact that the Bible does not spell out everything in fine detail. It gives you large movements. It gives you, you know, uh, rather uh, very broad perspectives, but it does not get into the details or specific aspects of, you know, uh, the subjects that we might study. For example, uh, when you talk about the resurrection, we always say that our resurrection will be such that we will possess spiritual bodies. All right. Uh, now, does the Bible tell us exactly what that means? Uh, what is the composition of a spiritual body? We know what a physical body is because we live in it. But uh, we don't really fully know exactly what a spiritual body would compose of and what we are, what we can do. We are given broad, you know, uh, perspectives of it, but we can't get into any detail. And so subjects like these can lead some to start adding the details, which the Bible does not give, and then lead to heresy. And that is where I think we get into trouble. And so that may be something that we need to keep in mind, that uh, uh, the lack of detail uh, is deliberate. Obviously, God could have given us detail, but I don't know why. Uh, the Bible does not have those details. And we must learn to accept that and respect that in such a manner where we don't allow or be tempted to go beyond what the scripture says and then begin to start creating you know, all kind of heretical teaching, which unfortunately our fellowship had fallen under. And uh, we have thankfully corrected that. And we don't want to get into uh, speculation to such an extent where we start sensationalizing everything. Uh, a second point under this challenges is, unfortunately, there's very little agreement on the details uh, or the, you know, and, and, and leading to controversies, all right? Uh, the fact that we don't have specific details, uh, uh, you know, makes us to start disagreeing on what is the teaching on a particular subject? For example, the millennium. Uh, what is the millennium? Some people say it is a, a, a literal, physical, thousand-year reign. Some people say it isn't. It is a reign that started with, you know, before the millennium actually starts. So they have a, a pre-millennial, you know, understanding of it. And then there is a our millennial understanding of it. So there are various teachings on the millennium and that lends itself to some sense of controversy and, uh, you know, a, a disagreement on detail. So we have to be very careful about that. One more point on the challenges. The fact that we have eschatology, the fact that we have something that is mentioned in the Bible about the end, the entire credibility of the Bible and what Jesus says is at stake. So in other words, uh, 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 you know, the fact that something is mentioned is that is going to happen, uh, you know, impinges on the credibility of what is being said. 
Uh, so Jesus says very clearly that he will return. Uh, Jesus says various things about his return. So the fact that it must happen or will happen uh, is something that we have to trust in faith. Because otherwise our faith is in vain. We, we depend on this. We are looking forward to the time when all of this will take place. And so the credibility of the scriptures and, and the sayings of Jesus is very much at stake. In other words, our faith is at stake. And so we must learn to uh, you know, accept it. And we must believe that God is faithful and that he will accomplish all that is being said. <clears throat> so let me leave those challenges there. And now let me go to uh, how it helps us. Uh, how does the study of eschatology and the various subjects help us? And I thought this should be something helpful, I mean, to say, uh, you know, uh, something that uh, uh, gives us uh, a sense of direction. And so I have a few points I'd like to share with you on this. So the first point on regarding how it helps us is to understand that the end we are talking about the end things. The study of end things is actually a new beginning. So uh, it's a new beginning of joy and of peace. And that instills a sense of hope. So what we are studying actually is very hopeful. And there is a need for us to spend some time in it. So the end is actually a new beginning. Just give me a moment. Uh, forgot to plug in my charger. Right, so let's move on then. A second point under how it helps us is that um, uh, the fact that there is an end. There was a beginning in the creation, but there is now an end to start a new beginning, a new creation, gives us a sense of purpose versus a random accidental happening. Right, uh, Our existence is purposeful. Uh, we have a reason to, we have, there is a reason why we exist. So the study of eschatology actually tells us that there is a purpose for our existence. All right. Uh, we are not here by random accidental happenings, as I mentioned uh, in that particular point. Uh, we are not here just by accident and then we are gone and forgotten forever. No, there is a purpose for us. So eschatology helps us to understand there was a beginning and there is now we are reaching the ending and it shows that there is a specific purpose with which we have, uh, we, which we exist today. A third point on how it helps us, there is a future with hope. That is uh, uh, just to mention or rather reiterate point number one under this uh, particular subject. Uh, there is a future with hope. It helps us to understand that eschatology teaches us there is a good future, right? The, a, a future where there is no more evil, a, a future where there won't be the problems that we face today. And we can certainly include the pandemic in our discussion on that. You know, the scriptures tell us the former things have passed away. The former is all uh, alluding to the problems, the evil, the difficulty, the suffering, the tears, the crying. So eschatology gives us a sense of hope for the future. Two more points under this subject. It also helps us to recognize that God who is, you know, our creator, knows the end from the beginning, which basically helps us recognize God is in charge. He is sovereign, right? He has not lost his sovereignty. Uh, and God's sovereign nature is revealed. The fact that God knows the end from the beginning, I've uh, mentioned a scripture there, Isaiah 46, verse 10, where God reveals that. Uh, 
God very clearly indicates that I know the end from the beginning. In other words, he is not only knowing, he is also in charge. Uh, he, he cannot be, you know, he cannot, any, nobody can take away the sovereignty from him, right? As far as what will be accomplished in the end. And finally, on uh, uh, how it helps us. Knowing all of this, it provides endurance for our life today. Right? The fact that we have a good future, the fact that we know that evil will uh, finally be vanquished, provides endurance or perseverance for us today. We understand and we know that our labor is not in vain. Our struggles today is not in vain. It will culminate in something that is tremendously hopeful. We once again don't know how, and we cannot answer all the questions of why, but we are given in the scriptures to recognize that the end will be uh, something that is going to be wonderful. So I'm going to leave uh, those uh, thoughts there. And if you once again have any things to add, I hope you will do so. Uh, in our discussions uh, uh, later. Let me move to my next slide here. So we are talking about the last things. We are talking about, uh, you know, the study of end of the end of things. Uh, and if you notice the, uh, the heading of that slide, we are living in the last days. Normally, that is asked in a question form, and we used to do that uh, very often. Most people will put that as a question, are we living in the last days, question mark, <laughs> right? And, uh, uh, and then they come up with all kinds of reasonings and points to say, yes, we are living in the last days. But the Bible makes it very clear that we are living in the last days. Now, what do I mean by that? We'll come to the scriptures in just a moment. But I was just uh, looking at, uh, you know, as I was studying this, there are many preachers that will come and says, you know, they will have, uh, you know, a study like six signs to show that we are living in the last day. Or they will say, uh, you know, we have, you know, we have come to, the end of, you know, the time and next year, Jesus is going to return. And then they start predicting dates, right? Uh, and uh, that is the unfortunate thing and which we must not be tempted to do. So why do I say we are living in the last days? Let's look at these two scriptures. The first one is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, um, uh, uh, verses 1 to 5. Let me just read that for you. Notice it says, but mark this as Paul writes to Timothy, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. And then he continues in verse two, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Now, these are the signs of the last days. <laughs> That's what the apostle writes. And you have preachers coming and saying, six signs, this is the last day. All right. Now, here are the signs of the last days. Now, now tell me something. When, when has uh, these, these indications that the Apostle Paul says never existed? You know, right from the times of Jesus, people have been lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful and proud and abusive and disobedient. When have they not? So what I'm trying to say is, um, 
the last days has already we are already in it for a for a very fairly long time and when was the last days actually uh, according to the scripture announced now we'll go to hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 notice what it says in the past god spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways but in these last days okay in these last days he has spoken to us by his son notice the author of hebrew says these last days he is including the days in which the author is writing this as the last days and when has the last days begun he that from the time that jesus started i mean to say god started speaking through his son jesus christ our lord so technically speaking the last days has now lasted for 2000 years <laughs> right <laughs> um so uh we are living in the last days ever since jesus came and announced that the kingdom of god is at hand he basically announced now the last days has begun so we have to be careful that we don't uh get sidetracked or fooled to think that the last days has just begun or the last days will just begin in you know in the next few years no we have been living in the last days because where as soon as jesus came and announced uh the kingdom would be here uh he basically ushered you know the kingdom of course uh not in its fullness but at his second coming the the kingdom will be here in its fullness so we are living in the last days just to um uh, cap that with a quotation that i have from prophecy is to point us to jesus the best of all possible blessings once we have arrived at our destination we no longer need to focus on the path that brought us to him you see what uh, he is trying to help us understand is knowledge of dates knowledge of exactly sequence of events is is not a guarantee for salvation that is not what is something that we are supposed to be you know uh painstakingly do which unfortunately we did in the past right what prophecy should help us understand is do you know jesus christ more it is to point us to jesus and if we know jesus the purpose of prophecy prophecy in one sense has been fulfilled now uh should we not know when the european union or the you know, the beast will come and who's the antichrist and and all these speculative things well that's not going to help me you know uh receive salvation my salvation is in christ and the more i know christ the more i am you know ready for the what you know the end time <laughs> and the end time can happen any moment right just today i was reading that a young actor here in hyderabad passed away because of a massive cardiac arrest for him the end had come and at that moment knowing who the antichrist is or who the beast is has no help no it doesn't help but knowing christ helps and so when christ says you know uh you know watch watch yourselves is basically saying make sure that you're standing with Christ that you are you know covered under the blood of Christ that is what is more important so the focus on Christ is important and eschatology as we study it if our focus is shifted away from Christ then the whole exercise of learning and understanding eschatology is of no value right let us let me reiterate once again they are we are we are looking through a frosted glass we are not looking through a magnifying glass 
Eschatology is a frosted glass, or you could say we are looking through a, da a, a dark glass. We are not looking through a magnifying glass. So please don't think eschatology is a magnifying glass that will give you all the detail. And people are writing books and scaring people to buy it. And they are making millions and buying, uh, you know, uh, living off uh, the, uh, you know, all the money that they're making out of it. That's, uh, that is unfortunately uh, not the way the Bible would have expected for us to do, uh, to, to do this study on eschatology. Okay, I'm going to wrap up now and uh, let me just show you uh, a picture. I don't know if you remember the person in the picture. <laughs> you may have not seen him in a while, but uh, that is my son, Ashley. And he is, and he's holding my grandson in his arms. <laughs> uh, pardon me for uh, making this so personal, uh, you know, showing. But uh, this is just after the, the snow had melted uh, in, uh, you know, Niagara. And he just wanted to show the, the, you know, the new life that is coming, the green grass and the lovely, uh, you know, greenery on the top of the trees. The, the reason I uh, put this picture here is, you know, a father holding a child. And you can imagine uh, how secure a child feels. In, a fa in his father's arms, or for that matter, a mother's arms. You know, when a father embraces his child, picks him up and holds him to his chest, the tremendous amount of security one feels when that takes place. This little baby of ours, my grandson, is not aware of any details where his next meal is going to come from, who is going to cook, whether we have to go to the supermarket, whether there is the, a pandemic raging. Now, I'm not saying you should be ignorant, but the fact that the, he doesn't know any details, but still the security that he feels is because he is in his father's arms. That's what I'd like to just tell you. When we are in Jesus, when we are embraced by Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's where our security is. Not in the details of eschatology. Not in being able to crack who the Antichrist is or the beast is or the ten nation union of uh, the ten toes of Nebuchadnezzar's image. And uh, uh, whether, you know, uh, uh, the Temple Mount has to be you know, uh, changed or whatever. All those details are good. We can speculate a bit and, you know, you know, and have a little fun with that. But that does not give you any kind of security. Your security is always in the embrace of the loving Father, the Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. Right? That is what eschatology must teach us. It teaches us to be, it, it teaches us to learn to be secure because God loves us. His love never diminishes. His love never ends. Even though this world will end, his love never ends. And if we can trust his love for us, if we can continue to hang on to that love, just as my grandson would hang on to his father, Let's do that and let eschatology help us to do that. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. And uh, I just wanted to check with you. Uh, should we go into various details uh, and, and study all these things? I remember I showed you. Uh, let me just stop sharing there for a moment. Okay, we're back. You know, I mentioned uh, personal eschatology, general eschatology. Uh, we mentioned about the death and the afterlife. These are the various subjects we can study. Resurrection of the dead, great tribulation, second coming, millennium, new heavens, new earth. And of course, uh, 
When is Christ coming back? <laughs> should we study all this? I'm not sure. Or should we leave it as an overview? Uh, maybe you want to make some comments on that along with the other comments or maybe some questions that you might have. The <clears throat> floor is open. We've got a good, uh, I'm presuming another good 10 minutes. We can do some discussion. Yes, sorry, Murthy, go ahead. Uh, I think we should go into the details scripturally. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, details uh, will be, uh, uh, once again, uh, very sketchy, speculative, uh, because we don't want to go away from the scripture. Anil, you had a thought on that? Yes. Uh, where, why you are right that... Uh, <clears throat> We shouldn't be sort of uh, beating these uh, prophecies and so on to death and trying to fix dates and names and stuff like that. But the very fact that they are there in the Bible indicates that uh, at least one should be knowledgeable about, uh, you know, these matters. And one reason for that is so that we are prepared. Uh, so to that extent, I think, you know, like, that days are mentioned, you know, and the sacrifices and this and that. So some, some knowledge about these things and the trend towards that, should, should we be sort of uh, made aware of that? Okay, so what you're saying is uh, basically, uh, it's good to have an overview of each one of those points that uh, comes under eschatology. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I don't know about each one, but at least the major aspects of eschatology or all of the prophecies, right. you, know, as, you know, what do they point to the trend and stuff like that. Okay. I'm not saying that we should be able to identify who's the beast and who's the false prophet and all that. But yes, we should know that there in the time there will be something like this or there will be and, you know, all that in general terms. Okay. Uh, what what I may suggest is that uh, section 16 in our uh, uh, We Believe series uh, deals with some. Uh, today I gave you an overview, which is not in the in the booklet. Uh, I I uh, but they deal with a few. Maybe we can deal with that and then see if it, there is a need for us to go further. Is that okay? Maybe we can think over. Bertram, you had a thought. I am not sure if uh, you raised your hand. No. Okay. Okay. Yes. Can I can I have a thought? Uh, Vanessa, yeah, you go ahead and then uh, and then Rekha. Okay. So what I wanted to say that in the Bible, there uh, it what was written so many centuries ago about the revelations. Now God Himself knew that times are going to change. Man's uh, human's mind is going to develop, and things are going to change. We are not going to think in the prospects that we that they were thinking those days. So the revolutions that were revealed at that time can't it be changed? And God could have, I mean, sent somebody, sent another Messiah. There are so many years and centuries that have passed. Okay, another new Messiah, or another new word, or new revelations because of the changing of times. Okay. Wow, that's a, that's a huge uh, question. <laughs> uh, let me just quickly say, there can never be another Messiah. <laughs> uh, there is only one Messiah and he has already come. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, like the Jews who are waiting for a Messiah, but they didn't, didn't realize the Messiah has already come. But if you uh, are also talking about, uh, will God give new revelation uh, because of the changing time? Uh, will he give us some revelation that is not in the scriptures? Uh, in that respect, I, I, I must mention, uh, God may, uh, you know, in the Holy Spirit guide us. The Holy Spirit can lead us uh, in how to carry out the work that we are doing today in preaching the gospel or uh, live our lives in circumstances, uh, there could be guidance, but new revelation that contradicts scripture will never happen, right? God does not contradict himself. And so if anyone 
calls himself a prophet and he comes and preaches something which is contrary to the scripture uh, we sorry that that will become heretical and that will become a, and he will become a false prophet let me give you an example if anyone comes and says that jesus christ is going to return on uh, july the 1st 2022 immediately we can brand him as a false prophet because jesus himself said no man knows the day or the hour you know of the second coming so uh, does that help uh Venezuela. yes yes but then uh, but then see jesus he sent his only son jesus in flesh to save us okay when he saw that uh, okay we were not saved with his son coming in flesh now the only person left is the helper the holy spirit so can't he send the holy spirit also in flesh because the holy spirit is only i mean mentally mentally with us guiding us so if he sends him to redeem the world more that is the last you have to you have to find solution so he, god can send even the holy spirit in the end okay yeah. well uh, uh you, this is some good radical thinking I, i i can just mention that you know uh we should never ever think that jesus christ didn't finish the job uh he's coming in the flesh has accomplished the job and we don't need somebody else in the flesh and of course the scriptures tell us that only the second person of the trinity has come in the flesh uh in that respect uh so um uh see redemption is already done it's a question of how we are going to uh, uh experience the fullness of it and that requires whatever time god has allowed okay uh let me just bring in bertram and uh, bertie you had a thought on that yeah the scriptures also mention the holy spirit is coming in the flesh uh, from the time of jesus christ uh, the bible clearly reveals that if we uh, if we don't confess if uh, if uh, if uh, if we if a spirit uh, uh, does not confess that jesus christ has come in the flesh uh, it's uh, we can we can identify it as a false spirit uh and uh the bible clearly says that the holy spirit is coming in the flesh in fact uh, from the uh, we just celebrated the feast of pentecost where collectively uh the it was the 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 body the spiritual body of christ was started and it has been going on so about venessa's question of whether uh, the, the lord after christ coming and uh, accomplishing a great you know the redemption for us and and uh, you know the hope that we have she uh, he promised the holy spirit would come and empower enable us inspire us in holy and righteous living in fellowship and also in accomplishing god's work it has been coming it began from the time of the pentecost and so i can i uh, maybe you need to ask venessa what what does she mean by christ should uh, god should send the holy spirit and transform people radically uh, i mean maybe you may want to throw some light on it yeah but if i can just want do uh, make one comment of uh, with what you said uh, when you say the holy spirit is coming in the flesh uh, once again that can give you a wrong picture uh, the holy spirit comes into us who are fleshly and resides with us and empowers us yeah, but that's is, right holy spirit is not coming in the flesh right it comes into no, us no, no. who are flesh into us yes yes okay i just wanted to make that any other thoughts with no, uh, but, uh, what asked uh, but uh, could you clarify go ahead no just a thought i thought a, a day of the lord is a thousand years for us so when when something really is happening it could mean a couple of thousand years for us it really is not now we shouldn't be so precise in everything he's given us certain characteristics and that is all okay Uh, i think you're putting the time into perspective god's timing is uh, different <laughs> much much more uh, you know uh, what do you say uh, it has a different dimension than what our timing is it yeah that of course is very true uh venessa i hope we've not confused you in any way but if you should have any further questions on that feel free to message me and we can discuss that further is yeah, that okay yeah no no pastor no confusion because 
I I am a living uh, living person who can testify to so many things where in my life uh, God has been there and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So I have so many things that I can testify for. So my belief has has grown in a multitude since the last past say one year. Right. I I can't believe myself that how much I have grown just in spirit. I'm so thankful for that. Right. Well, I I can only say that uh, you know that's just wonderful to know that God bless you. May you continue to grow. Yes, Pastor. Any thoughts, Praveen? You had a thought? Yeah. If you have just five minutes, I can conclude. Uh yeah, we can we can take a little extra time. Yeah, today. Yeah, there are few points I would like to bring to your notice as we are studying the eschatology. Uh, one is a caution; the other one is uh, just a perspective you can think about. Number one is uh, when we are studying eschatology, it should not make us so eager, or it should not make us so, uh, you know, focused about uh, uh, going into going into a heavenly world. or going into escaping from the present moment and going into the better life well, i i hope you understand what am i trying to say the message of uh, eschatology the message of uh, uh, book of revelation and these things they have to influence our present they are not here those messages are not for us that we should uh, Uh, have a desire to escape, leave this world, and go back there. The I don't belong here, and all that should not make us irresponsible towards our present and our society, our families, our relationships, and everything. And a hope that does not influence our present is a dead hope. We are talking about hope that is in Christ to talk about, or about the world that is to come, or any hope. If it is focused only on future. that is not a true hope a hope that does not influence our present is a dead hope that we should be uh, aware of if you the so when we study about eschatology also it should be influencing us it should make us more jealous to do the christ work to live uh, in christ likeness uh, in our relationships and in the society that is that is very much important if you miss that we have lost the spirit of study of eschatology itself and uh, number two thing is uh, uh, somehow this translation eschatology means study of last thing is very much famous but i would like to look at it in a different perspective uh, rather than just end it's talk it's not just talking about an end uh, it is it is about a transition it is not just about end uh, to an extent you have explained through that picture of ashley and all its uh, uh, it is uh, beautiful eschatology is not just about end why am i just uh, saying it is not about end because we christians are believing god's kingdom is eternal his kingdom does not have an end when his kingdom does not have an end and jesus said his kingdom is already here how do we focus about our lives our kingdom and everything uh as we say there is an end going to come there is an end going to come i'm not saying whatever written in book of revelation are not going to happen kindly don't misunderstand what am i saying what am i what <coughs> what am i saying is an a different thing so whatever the method and per, per things god may use the events god may use it is primarily a transition for us because we are already in the kingdom of god and his kingdom does not have an end and uh one great uh, one of the uh, those are two points i would like to bring number one is jesus prayed in the lord's prayer let your let your kingdom come to earth let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so this is the vision of jesus as far as the kingdom and uh, the future is concerned that is why in book of revelation also the heavenly jerusalem comes down to earth and it's not like we transporting to heaven so the vision of jesus uh, is bringing heaven down to earth so he is going to establish that it so we should not be thinking just like end end and unlike other beliefs lots of people say there is going to be an end for entire humanity because whatever is began it has to come to an end that is the basic philosophy behind all of this 
it came from zoroastrianism and then adopted by greeks and uh, so many people in our own country have adopted because everything that has a you know, which has born should come to an end and we people as writers or thinkers we have a problem if you start a story it has to come to an end there should be a happy ever after or there should be an end we don't think about we won't be able to think about uh, a story without an end we try to an extent through daily serials but even those daily serials will come to an end in 8 years or 10 years or in some time so we are not able to think beyond an end that is the reason we want to have an end this is in our perspective and then uh, one interesting thought we can forget is uh, disciples ask jesus when the end is going to come matthew chapter 24 luke chapter 12 these things and jesus does not say and end is going to come on so and so day or so and so things are going to happen then end is there uh, what he says he gives some signs of end times and those signs were there since adam, adam committed sin whatever the uh, written in matthew chapter 24 or luke 12 similar things are there from genesis and probably uh, those days the method of doing those stuff may be different those days probably people must be killing with knives now we are killing with guns in the days to come people are killing with viruses and so many so many other stuff so we don't know but we are hearing war everywhere and whatever jesus mentioned we are already seeing not now since uh, the day of adam okay but uh, the thing is disciples ask the question jesus gave some signs and he doesn't say and then end is going to come he doesn't close that he gave some signs but he did not close the conversation saying then comes the end so when we talk about eschatology let us not make our minds up thinking about it is the end of humanity or it is the end of human society it is the end of uh, whatever you know with we, we think but definitely it is end of uh, the evil it is end of the suffering it is end of pain but for we christians who are believing in jesus jesus is the one who connected heaven and earth together he is the one he is in between he is in past and future present actually he is in between so we are believing in him we are in him so as we christians we do not think about eschatology as a as an end and it is about a way out for us a run away from this world and going into that but it is about a hope that we are going to look jesus said his kingdom has come an entire humanity is uh, trans uh, you know is going through a transition where we experience the heavenly kingdom here so the events can take place and how i don't know we don't know all the details but it it is not and it is not a full stop for us it is about a transition that should be a better way we should have better thank we should have thank you praveen i think uh, like i mentioned the end is a new beginning <laughs> right you use the word transition so uh, but one thing one thing will come to an end satan <laughs> 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 this present world system will come to an end yeah. uh yeah right and that we want to end <laughs> we don't want him to be around but yes uh, a sense of hope uh, that the the whole study must give us a sense of hope and like you rightly said uh, a sense of hope for us today uh, you know not just uh, living some you know for something that is uh, you know that, the, the endurance that we need today is very important i think uh, we have uh, gone a little over time i hope i didn't uh, detain any one of you thank you again for joining us yes uh, berti you have a last thought go ahead berti uh, the uh, bible mentions the former things are passed away mm. the former things are passed away the yes yes very true right transition the end is the beginning of new thing yeah okay all right thank you again for joining us and if i can request our trustees to stay back after the meeting and uh, i would also like to request surya murthy would you like to end and thank god for our time together uh can surya murthy hear us surya murthy yeah yes yes 
let us pray. We are thankful to you for this precious time of Bible study over the end time. We, we have learned many things about that. What we have understood is that we have to be thankful to Jesus Christ's sacrifice that he will bring all our lives to at the end of resurrection. We hope and trust this study has helped us. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.